Hello and welcome back to another Magic the Gathering EDH deck tech idea. Today we are featuring Lovisa Cold Eyes. She is a 5 mana free free and each creature that's a barbarian, a warrior or a berserker gets plus 2 plus 2 and has haste. Yes, this is an extremely risky commander because this also counts for your opponent's creatures. So we gotta make sure that we win as soon as possible as she is on the battlefield. But first of all, due to the fact that we are a mono red deck and also that she's a 5 mana commander, we need to ramp her out. So we play cards like Scepter of Eternal Glory, a 4 mana legendary artifact which you can tap to add 1 mana of any color, but you can also add 3 mana of any one color, but you can only do that if you control 3 or more lands with the same name. This is going to be really easy for us as we are playing a bunch of normal mountains because we are a monocolored deck. After that we also play extra planar lands, a 3 mana artifact with imprint, so when it enters the battlefield you may exile target land you control. Definitely make sure to exile one of those lands that tap for the mana for extra planar lands. And then whenever a land with the same name as the exiled card is tapped for mana, its controller adds 1 mana of any type that land produced. Also keep in mind that that will also count for your opponent's basic mountains, so you should probably focus those players first. We also play Ruby Medallion, a 2 mana artifact, red spells you cast cost 1 less to cast. After that we also play one of my favorite mana rocks in mono red, Glittering Stockpile, a 3 mana artifact treasure, and you can tap it to add 1 red mana to your mana pool and you also put a stash counter on it. It has another activated ability where you tap it and sacrifice it to add X mana of any one color where X is the number of stash counters on it. To do something for our early game we also play Wayfarer's Bauble, a 1 mana artifact and you can pay 2 mana, tap it and sacrifice it to search a library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tapped and then shuffle. We also play Heraldic Banner, a 3 mana artifact, as it enters the battlefield choose a color. Creatures you control of the chosen color get plus 1 plus 0 and you can tap it to add 1 mana of the chosen color. It is a great mana rock and also a nice anthem effect for your mono red creatures. Once we have brought out Lovisa we need to protect her to profit from her static ability. So we play cards like Deflecting Swat, a 3 mana instant. If you control a commander you may cast a spell without paying its mana cost. You may choose new targets for target spell or ability, so you can redirect those nasty removal spells of your opponents. You also play Wild Ricochet, a 4 mana instant, you may choose new targets for target instant or sorcery spell, then copy that spell, you may choose new targets for the copy. When something wild is going on on the stack, you can put this one onto the stack too, to redirect some targets and copy some counter spells. We also play Untimely Malfunction, a 2 mana instant with choose 1, destroy target artifact, change the target of target spell or ability with a single target or one or two target creatures can't block this turn. This card is extremely flexible and also helps us to prevent our opponent's creatures from blocking or to getting rid of some nasty artifacts. We play Return the Favor, a 2 mana instant with Spree and one of its plus one modes is copy target instant spell, sorcery spell, activated ability or triggered ability, you may choose new targets for the copy. And its other mode is plus one, change the target of target spell or ability with a single target. Furthermore, we play Bolt Bend, a 4 mana instant, this spell costs 3 less to cast if you control a creature with power 4 or greater. Change the target of target spell or ability with a single target. And when it comes to protecting your powerful spells on the stack, we also play Reverberate, a 2 mana instant, copy target instant or sorcery spell, you may choose new targets for the copy. This will allow you to copy a counter spell that is countering your spell, or you can also copy some powerful spells of your opponents to bring her even more ahead in the game. Once Lovisa is protected and we have enough mana available, we wanna bring out our win cons, which are Combat Celebrant, a free mana for one, and if Combat Celebrant hasn't been exerted this turn, you may exert it as it attacks. When you do, untap all other creatures you control, and after this combat phase, there's an additional combat phase. We also play Kala, Fury of Avernus, a 5 mana 5 4, and whenever you attack, if it's the first combat phase of the turn, untap all attacking creatures. They gain first strike until end of turn and after this phase there is an additional combat phase. When it comes to overrunning our opponents we want to play Tiamat's Fanatics, a 5 mana for free with haste in Myriad. So whenever this creature attacks for each opponent other than defending player you may create a token that's a copy of that creature that's tapped in attacking that player or planeswalker they control. But you exile the tokens at the end of combat. 
but those tokens will also be anthemed by Lovisa, so it will surprise your opponents out of nowhere. Because of that, we also play Warchief Giant, a 5 mana 5 free with Haste and Myriad, which is basically the stronger version of Tiamat's Fanatics. We also play Flame Rush Rider, a 5 mana 3 free, and whenever it attacks, create a token that's a copy of another target attacking creature, and that's tap them attacking. Exile the token at the end of combat. You can also dash this one in for 4 mana. And last but not least, we also play Morok, Fury of Akum, a 6 mana 6-6, six, six, and each creature you control gets plus 1 plus 0 for each time it has attacked this turn. It also has a landfall mechanic. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, if it's your main phase, there's an additional combat phase after this phase. At the beginning of that combat, untap all creatures you control. And now I will feature a few enchantments that will help you to win the game. Blood Moon, a free mana enchantment, non-basic lands are mountains. We are playing a monocolored deck, so it is totally fine to do everything to win the game, even playing a nasty stack piece like this. Goblin War Drums, a free mana enchantment, creatures you control have menace. We also play Warstorm Surge, a 6 mana enchantment, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. This is great as a few of our win cons have Myriad, and Lovisa also anthems those creatures, so we will ping for a few more extra damage. Berserker's Onslaught, a 5 mana enchantment, attacking creatures you control have double strike. We also play Uncivil Unrest, a 5 mana enchantment, non-token creatures you control have Riot, so they can either enter with haste or a plus one plus one counter, and with Lovisa on the battlefield we will take that plus one plus one counter, and if a creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals double that damage instead. Last but not least, we play Flame Shadow Conjuring, a 4 mana enchantment, whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay one red. If you do, create a token that's a copy of that creature. That token gains haste and you exile it at the beginning of the next end step. This card is great as a few of our win cons do have Myriad, so having multiple creatures that have Myriad can win you the game on the spot. You want to win more? You get it. We play Godo Bandit Warlord, a 6 mana 3-3, free free, and when it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an equipment card, put it onto the battlefield and then shuffle. Whenever Godot attacks for the first time each turn, untap it and all Samurais you control. After this phase, there's an additional combat phase. And you do probably see it coming that we play him with Helm of the Host, a 4 mana legendary artifact. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create a token that's a copy of a equipped creature, except the token isn't legendary if a equipped creature is legendary. And that token gains haste. These two cards combined are an infinite combo that can also win you the game on the spot. But Helm of the Host is also a great card with Lovisa, simply to give your creatures another Anthem boost. Alright guys, these were a few cards that I would play in Lovisa Cold Eyes. Let me know down in the comments below which cards you would add to the deck. Make sure to check out my whole deck list in the notes below. And let me know which legendary creature I shall feature next. And then I would say, see you in the next one. Goodbye guys.